Hey guys, how are ya? Welcome back to my channel. It's me, Stephen. It is the 9th of October. It is 1.01 in the afternoon here in Philadelphia. I went to bed probably about 2 o'clock last night or 2 o'clock in the morning. Woke up around 10, 10.30. Really had a good night's sleep. Uh, the view is better than I suspected it would be. If you like cityscapes, I think it's a really novel little uh, neighborhood here. All of the rooftops um, are very creative and sort of cobbled together, but kind of cool. And you can kind of see the neighborhood down there. We're going to go for a little bit of a walk. It's about 60 degrees. I am wearing, let's see if we can show you. Da -da 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 -da. It's Well, it's hard to see, but I'm wearing my little uh, shorts, my little uh, cremeau top, and a little woolen day jacket kind of thing so i'm gonna get my key and uh let's go for a little bit of a walk shall we hey there i'm having a nice little walk around our hotel is in a little downtown shopping area kind of cool a little bit of everything from brooks brothers to free people and some pandora and warby parker all sorts of cute little shops i walked around for a few minutes poked around but uh it's it's very much like the West Coast in that you got this fairly affluent neighborhood and then there are people sleeping on the sidewalk on top of heating grates or, and, or steam grates. And it's sort of startling. It really is startling. Uh, but Philadelphia is beautiful. Look at this building right across from here. Look at this archway kind of thing. All the little, the little teeny balconies and all the tile work up on top there. Really, really cool. Really interesting. The architecture is strange. That's a very, very weird mix of very, very modern and then that. Uh, so I'm going to walk around for a bit. It's about 65 degrees. Grab a, a coffee, I think. I'm going to eat back in my room because I've got plenty of food. There's no need to spend money out here. But uh, yeah, just have a little bit of a walk around, enjoy the city for a bit, and then uh, wander back to my hotel. Well, there's a building. <laughs> it's pretty ornate. I think I've been here once before years ago. It was during a holiday season, the Christmas season. There was some sort of festival or something happening around the corner. Um, I saw a big sign for Benjamin Franklin House. I'm not sure if that's a hotel or not, but I'm going to head in that direction, see what that is. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, that is the Benjamin Franklin house right there. I suspect that it is not Benjamin Franklin's house. By the size of that sign, I'm getting it, guessing it's a hotel chain or something. So I'm going to take a left over here and see what I see. Uh, the neighborhood has changed quite a bit. A little bit more urban. But I also see a Primark. <laughs> I love Primark. I usually hit the one in Boston. Uh, I don't need anything, and anything I can buy at Primark, I can probably find something better at Goodwill for cheaper, but I might walk in anyway, just in case. There's also a Taco Bell back there. I might get a little taco. I'm, I'm a, little, a little hungry, but I'm going to eat most of my food at the hotel room. Yeah, I'm going to walk into Primark. What the heck? All right, well, nothing very good or interesting. Who makes anything in that color? Nobody looks good in this color. I mean, more people look good in orange than they do rust. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm gonna head out of here. Nothing good. So I took a turn out of the fashion district, which was not amazing. Uh, <laughs> and I found myself in Philly's uh, Chinatown, I guess. So I'm gonna walk around for a few minutes. Uh, and uh, it is 1.40, so I'm going to head back to my hotel room so I can be back uh, in the room by 3 so I can get ready for work tonight. But here we go, there's Chinatown. I don't know if anyone knows this, but I am weak for Hello Kitty. I love Hello Kitty. Oh, I'm sorry. So I'm going to walk in and see what they have here. I've been here once before, I think, with my friend Shella. Remember Shella who got stuck in a beanbag chair in New York? Hello. How are you? Fine. Awesome. It's cute. 
How cute is that? My cats wouldn't play Monopoly with me though. Mm. Oh, they're alive. Oh. Those crabs were alive. Not really alive, but kind of alive. They were moving a little bit, but kind of sad. Ooh. And scary and gross. <laughs> if you didn't know, I'm not a fan of seafood, especially when you see it alive. Oh, no. That's a friendly looking pumpkin up there. This place is called the Walnut Garden. And it is, it looks like a little food court of food trucks that aren't quite food trucks. Look at this cute little ice cream shop on wheels. Little kids, pumpkins. It's cute. It's cute. All right. Lots of little kids. <laughs> oh, this light is not good for me, but it also might be that I look like hell. Um, I might come back here. I might come back here. It was really nice to walk around uh, this part of Philadelphia and not be stuck out in the middle of nowhere, which is where we used to be. Uh, but the hotel staff here, hi, how are you? Is so nice. Oh my God, they're so nice. Um, I, before coming up here to the seventh floor, I wanted to make sure that my room key would work because sometimes it doesn't. And um, the front staff, there were three pe three attractive young really nice people um and uh just fantastic staff and they uh we had a really fun conversation and uh yeah so i, I think i might come back to philly for this hotel for this hotel all right uh it is 2 28 i'm gonna make some food and eat close my eyes for a few minutes maybe maybe and then be ready downstairs so i will see you next time at the airport. All right, see you later. So we're leaving out of gate A4 today, and I'm like, isn't this nice? This is a much nicer gate area than ours. And my coworker Colin says, well, this is because it's Americans' gates. It's not our gates. It's probably very true. Oh, pizza. This is a place that my coworkers are gonna grab something. It looks so delicious. It looks so yummy. Look at that. But have a lot of food in my bag, including a delicious sandwich, so I'm going to resist and save my money. A7, where are we are? Where are we going? Hey guys, welcome back to Las Vegas. That flight was four hours and 42 minutes, 40, I don't know, it was, it was a long flight. It was a long flight, uh, but it was fantastic. It was really nice. We did have a couple people who were a little bit more work than necessary but for the most part we had really fantastic passengers i might do um philly again oh my gosh connor's wife is here i gotta meet her she's so nice all right so i got to meet connor's wife oh, i'm so excited i hold him in very high regard so it was nice to meet his wife i'm filming for my famous youtube channel um very nice flight very nice flight no drama no trauma Maybe I'll do Philadelphia again. I don't know. Well, I have to. I have another trip there this month. But I had half of my sandwich uh, earlier today. I'm finishing the, the rest because we have a bit of a delay in getting to uh, Oakland. So could be worse. It could be much worse. Um, but, you know, again, the best crew. We're having the best time. And, uh, yeah. So... It's been a very nice day so far. So let's see what happens with this Oakland flight. We're also full once again. It's been full the, the whole way. Uh, but I'll see you in Oakland. Toodaloo. <sighs> it's 8.40. We're supposed to be landing in Oakland in like five minutes, but we haven't left yet. Ah! I don't know why I made that noise. Uh, one hour, 11 minutes is our time in this flight. And it's completely oversold. They're trying to get people on another flight, either with us or Southwest. Uh, because we are oversold. Um, yeah, I'm tired. <laughs> I'm tired. Let's go to uh, Oakland. Oh, hey guys, how are you? Welcome to Oakland. Uh, here's a room tour. There you go. Two, uh, two full-size beds. Eh. Um, what a nice flight. Nice and quick. One hour and 11 minutes. Uh, we were supposed to be oversold. In fact, the, the gate agent was working the, like the Dickens to get 
like the Dickens, what am I, like 95, uh, she worked real hard in trying to make sure that everyone, you know, got on a, this flight or the next. And we had some open seats, thank goodness, because it allowed me to uh, move some people around because we had some people of a generous proportion that, that just would have been cramped. So it was nice to have an open seat or two. Um, let's see, the only note really on this flight was uh, a young lady named Faith. <clears throat> Near the end of the flight, uh, she uh, looked a little anxious and she stopped me and, and she asked me some questions about turbulence. And uh, I said, oh, hold on one moment. I'll be right back. I have a story for you. I had to go do something and come back. And we chatted about my preparation to handle turbulence. I was a very anxious flyer when I, before I became a flight attendant. And I was very anxious about turbulence. And I had been staying in the Tampa Bay area, if you know, you know. And um, I spent three weeks going uh, on roller coasters over and over and over and over again to burn the anxiety and fear of, of not being in control, which is really the basis for me and my fear of turbulence. And um, that kind of burned that anxiety out of me. And I shared that story and then a couple analogies I have that are kind of fun about how the plane moves to get through the air. And she just, um, she's looking at me with like, tears in her eyes. And uh, we had a little chat and the ladies next to her were very nice. And all of us had a nice little chat. And um, then I head back to my seat and um, they all, all three of the ladies waited until everyone had gotten off the plane so that they could chat and say goodbye to me, which is really sweet. Faith in particular, she waited until the other ladies had gotten off the plane. She turned around, eyes glistening and said, I have to thank you, you know, for being nice and helping her out because her grandfather had just died while she was on this flight and she and she shared this story of how upset she was and how she didn't know how to even react and she was just not feeling well and not feel comfortable or and and uh, I seemed to make her feel a little bit better and uh, she gave me a big big hug and oh, heartbreaking it just feels so bad for her she's very young and to lose someone like a grandpa you know grandfather it's tough but this is one more reality, one more wake up. People don't always travel for pleasure. And so you have to be nice. You never know who needs you to be nice to them. You know, you know those days, you have those days that are really rough. You don't know how you're going to get through the day. And the, the cashier at CVS is nice to you. And you're like, oh, thank you. I needed one person to be nice to me today. And it was you. Thank you so much. Blah, 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 blah. Story time, story time, story time. I'm going to get this uniform off, eat a little bit because I'm starving, and then probably play some Starfield because it's only 11 o'clock. It's 10, uh, 11.30 actually. Uh, so I'll sit and play some Starfield for a couple hours until I get tired. And then tomorrow I'm thinking of going into San Francisco. So I'll take you along with me. No idea what I'm doing, but we'll find out together tomorrow. <laughs> All right. In the meantime, you have a great day and I will talk to you later. Bye. Fly safe.